So we've been looking at points of intersection in our vectors topic, and if you haven't already done so, check out examples uh, 19 and 20 on intersections of lines and lines and planes. So what we're going to have a look at here is uh, the intersection of two planes and what that means for our uh, the, the actual intersection point or points. So if you've got two planes, it's very straightforward. Uh, there are either so three situations. You get two planes in the space, either are what we call coincident, they're overlying, they're the same plane effectively. In which case, if we're talking about intersections, there are infinite solutions because every point is an in, a possible point is an intersection. Okay. Very unusual situation to come across, uh, but it does exist. So that's this uh, situation here where we've got coincident planes. The other uh, situation which isn't quite so common uh, is that they're parallel. Uh, and in this case here, there are obviously no solutions because they don't intersect at all. So that's our kind of two extremes. Either there's an infinite number of intersections or there's no intersections. However, uh, the most common uh, situation that we have is that the two planes do intersect, but by the nature of two planes intersecting, they don't intersect at a point. This is the first time we're actually going to have to consider the fact that the solution to the intersection of two planes is actually a whole line because there are, again, technically an infinite number of intersections, but they all lie on a straight line. So the solution to the intersection of two planes is very often the equation of a line. And that's what we're going to have a look at in these examples. Now, interestingly, there are two methods in order to, to, do the, to get the equation of the line. And I'm going to use them in two separate examples, example 21 and example 22. Both of them generate the correct answer, but they, they take a different um, approach to it. And I'll explain them each uh, separately in the two different examples. So just to uh, kind of clarify, there are two different methods of finding the equation of the line. In mathematics, there's in, in, in a lot of things we do, there are different methods to getting a solution and often in math education uh, the, somebody decides this is the, the most effective way for a particular group of pupils. Uh, for some pupils maybe one method is appropriate and for some method another and that's usually uh, decided in order to help them uh, make some progress. So in this case here it's not a matter of one's uh, more complex than the other. I just like the fact that there are two options uh, because they both use kind of slightly different uh, concepts within the vector work. So I'm going to show you them both. Right. So the first one is substitution. And so we're going to have a look first of all at how we find the equation of the line uh, formed by the intersection of two planes using substitution. Right. Now, by definition, all we're going to do are, are substitution methods, as uh, we'll explain the other one. Uh, shortly. So here we go, find the equation of the line formed by the intersection of these two planes. So we've determined that there is going to be an intersection and that intersection is going to be a line. So algebraically, you, we've come across before the idea of finding uh, the intersection of two lines in two dimensions and what we can use for that sometimes is a kind of elimination method. And what we do here is you know, we eliminate one of the variables, maybe add the equations together, and uh, therefore we've simplified it with an equation of one, one variable. Okay, So our starting point for this is similar. We're going to take uh, two equations with three variables, um, and we're going to add them together so that one of the variables is eliminated, and that's going to give us an equation in only two variables. Now, sometimes you can do that by inspection without multiplying, but you sometimes will have to multiply one or both equations in order to get those conditions. So we can see here that we've got a similar quantity of y, which means that if I were to subtract the uh, bottom equation from the top, then my y terms would disappear. 4x subtract 1x is 3x. y subtract y 
make is zero y and negative two z subtract negative z is equivalent to negative two z add one z so that gives me negative z and three subtract one is two um, and so you might think well that's not necessarily any easier i can't solve uh, that equation i've still got two variables but this is where the interesting thing comes in remember that an equation of a line has a, a parameter which is an, at the moment arbitrary because uh, we don't need it to have a particular value so what we do is we, we're going to assign x y or z a parameter t um, and you can assign any of them uh, and so in this case here we could assign t to, um, to x or z now just a quick uh, hint here it, it's better off it's not always uh, it doesn't always work out this way but it's better off if you assign the variable t to the uh, the variable that has the larger coefficient in this case here there's a three multiplying the x there isn't anything multiplying z so i'm going to assign uh, x to the value t the main reason for that is that we're going to then re we're going to find the values for the other two and this avoids having a fractional values sometimes okay but it doesn't matter we can assign x y or z this parameter t so here i'm going to let x equal t which means that um if x equals t we can say therefore uh, 3t minus z equals 2 uh, which means that we can say that 3t minus 2 equals z okay just by doing some algebraic uh, rearranging so now i've got effectively two of the parametric equations of a straight line okay so x equals t well that's a parametric equation and z equals 3t minus 2 uh, what are we missing we're missing an equation for y so how do we get that well we take the equation of one of the planes because remember at the point of intersection um the x y and z coordinates will be matching in each case so we can take i'm going to take the smaller one um it, smaller coefficients always works for me so x plus y minus z equals one and we can substitute in we can say that x is now t plus y minus z is now 3t minus 2 equals 1 and we're using the equation of the plane to determine an, an e expression for y so what have i got multiply out that negative bracket um, so t minus 3t is negative 2t y minus 2t plus 2 equals 1 so y is equal to 2t minus 1 and back up here i've kind of that's not the way i'm answering the question i'm just checking to see uh, that i've got all the three different equations which i do so that's actually the parametric equation let's just check what the question is asking find the equation of the line formed by the intersection of these planes so we've actually gathered our three uh, parametric equations so i'll write it in slightly better form the equation of the line of intersection is or equations because we're going to just keep it in parametric form um, x equals t y equals 2t minus 1 and z is equal to what did we say it was 3t minus 2 yeah it's up there at the top okay if required i could write it in symmetric form by rearranging it for the parameter t uh, but i'm not going to at this stage so what we've done there we have uh, taken the two planes we have effectively done a little bit of simultaneous you know, solving simultaneous equations um, in three dimensions in order to get uh, this simplified expression in two variables i have and this is the kind of leap of logic here i have arbitrarily uh, decided that the x value is going to be given the parameter t so that i can find 
the, the y and z coordinates in um, relation to everything is relative uh, in this case. So we're saying relative to x equals t, the y coordinate is going to be 2t minus 1, um, and the z coordinate is going to be 3t minus 2, all relative to this parameter. But we can do it, and that's what allows us to then generate the equation of the line of intersection. Okay, so that's the substitution method. There is another method called the direction and point method, which is fairly self-explanatory, and we'll look at that in example 22. So check it out, and you can make a decision as to which one makes more sense or which one uh, you think is better or more accurate. Um, it's good to be able to do them both, to be honest.